At first glance, 2009's Wet might seem like a blatant exploitation of violence and a handful of elements from other action games of that era, and that's because it is. If you were to take Max Payne and Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof, mix them all up in a mid-tier cauldron and water it all down a bit, you would get wet. I mean, you, would, you wouldn't get wet, you would stay perfectly dry, you would just get the game wet. Unless you were gaming outside in the rain, then you would get wet and wet. Nonetheless, Wet is a game from a developer with an enormous resume, and more or less accomplished what it set out to do. It clearly wasn't for everybody, but of those it was aimed at, most enjoyed its culmination of action game tropes and grindhouse aesthetic. So, if that's the case, why have we gone so many years with no sequel? Why is Ruby Malone's stylishly violent method of problem solving seemingly left in the dustbin of gaming history, without so much as a remaster or even a port to modern consoles? If a game as drab and generic as Homefront can get a sequel, then where exactly the hell is Wet 2? Wet was a third-person shooter action game that, as I mentioned, pretty much checked all of its own boxes. It had a compelling score multiplying mechanic, a stylish combat system, a character that was as fun to play as she was to look at, put together in a well-paced entertaining story, and all wrapped up in an aesthetic rarely seen in games and even less often executed as well as it is here. Most importantly though, like many great games, Wet was authentic to itself despite the fact that it alienated itself from many players with the direction it chose to take. Authenticity of this sort rarely comes without a price, and for this game, that price was turning off a lot of mainstream critics and pretty much anybody else who were sticklers about polished gameplay and nuanced characters. Wet didn't have a lot of that. While the gameplay is polished enough and the characters and story were passable, Wet's focus was on violence, eye candy, and pure entertainment. While the surface of the game is rather two-dimensional, there was more going on under the hood here than you might have expected. The developer, Artificial Mind and Movement, definitely could have called it a day after establishing Wet's core tenets, but they actually went a little further than that. Ruby is a habitual dual wielder and prefers to always have two of every gun. This is more than a badass look though, as it allows her to target multiple enemies at once using one of the hundreds of slow-mo sequences you will be triggering in your playthrough. One enemy is automatically targeted while another is manually selected by the player, which is a rather elegant way to pull it all off if you ask me. On top of that, Ruby can also slice through enemies like a hot katana through butter with her close-range blade attacks. To make matters even more compelling and authentic to what the game is all about, often you'll find yourself in a closed-off arena, where the object is to pull off as many stylish kills as possible. These large open areas are full of ramps to jump off of, bars to swing on, and objects to slide under, all while grabbing as many score multipliers as possible, which are, of course, strategically placed to encourage more jumping, swinging, and sliding around the area, almost like a Tony Hawk Pro Skater level, except instead of connecting grinds and flips with skateboards, you are connecting stylish kills with weapons of death. When these set-piece arenas are firing on all cylinders, Wet can provide a symphony of carnage that few games match. That said, when it's not, the muddy textures, the awkward level designs, and other unrefined elements stick out like a sore thumb. This is where Wet starts to dry up and shows us why the case for a sequel might have been hard to make. Despite not reviewing particularly badly overall, it also didn't really stand out in a positive way either, which, of course, affected sales. I would argue that this was at least in part due to Wet's outrageous competition from the likes of Batman Arkham Asylum that all came out the same year and were all stellar games in their own rights, arguably better in most ways. That said, I don't generally like big competition as an excuse for a game not doing well. It was Wet's job to compete with those games and in most ways it failed to do so. Although I do think 2009 was a particularly crowded and competitive year for the genre, it's also more than fair to say that Wet probably should have spent more time in the oven. Despite the flaws with the original, Wet 2 was, in fact, a thing for a while. After Artificial Mind and Movement went through a little restructuring and changed to what we know them now as, Behavior Interactive, 
The sequel was purportedly worked on for a while, but eventually canceled as we learned from a LinkedIn profile post of a former technical artist. Behavior Interactive would move on from Wet 2 to other projects like Wipeout in the Zone and Alvin and the Chipmunks Chipwrecked which is an extremely painful sentence to say, and as far as we know, they would not resume work on the game at any point. Wet was a casualty of many things, a niche audience, a divisive attitude, a lack of polish, and unusually stiff competition. As a result, it's hard to imagine that a faithful sequel would be any different. While the same team that brought us Wet would go on to bring us classics like Love and Hip Hop the Game on iOS, they would never find time for Wet 2. Unfortunately, as time passes and the gulf between small projects and massive ones widens, it's harder and harder to see where a Wet 2 would fit exactly. While the mid-tier of gaming has seen somewhat of a comeback in recent years, that has mostly been through independent developers that have grown from their smaller games and are now financing more ambitious projects. It has mostly not come from the world of major developers and publishers, which is where the wet IP lies. So, unless Behavior Interactive suddenly sees a massive shift in their strategy of working on mobile games and movie tie-ins, or Bethesda decides to farm it out to someone else and fund it like they would one of their other major franchises, two things that seem highly unlikely at this point, it doesn't seem wise to get your hopes up for a sequel for The Bounty Hunter just yet. In fact, this is one of those rare cases where I would wager it's probably not going to happen for a very long time, if ever. Wet sales weren't really there. The review scores weren't particularly impressive. The fan base for the game is small and basically silent. It gives me no pleasure to say it, but if Wet 2 was ever going to happen, it needed to happen in 2011, when it was likely cancelled. Ruby's run might very well be over. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed and would like to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to ensure you'll be notified when new videos go up.